Hi guys, sometimes the greatest advocates for nationalization are incidentally the CEOs of private or publicly limited companies. The ones that run many of the most important services that serve the needs of the general public. Here the chief executive of SSE, an energy company, was asked about the massive salary he's raking in and his response was, well, pretty pathetic when you consider that so many people are struggling to pay bills and will go hungry. Have a listen. Your personal pay package in total leapt by 47% to £4.5 million this year. It's quite hard to defend that, isn't it? Uh, in terms of pay, I don't set my pay. It's set by an independent uh, board of people. Uh, it's fully transparent and has been for the entire time I've been a director of this company. And I'm obviously clearly held accountable uh, for a whole set of things that I have to deliver um, year in, year out. And these are long-term measures. Do you not feel at all embarrassed getting paid millions of pounds when householders up and down the country are struggling to feed themselves and heat their homes? As I've said, uh, as regards my pay, I don't set my pay. It's very transparent what I get paid, unlike many people. Is it transparent? Of... <laughs> he sounds like a politician, not answering the question. Are you embarrassed by the amount of money you're paid £4.5 million this year? While many people, as a result of the company that you run, are going to go, are going to not be able to switch on their heating, are going to go hungry. Excessive, it, it, it's published uh, unlike many people's pay it's published uh, every year you can see what's there i'm accountable for del delivering the things we are do you think if people can't pay their energy bills this winter and they refuse to pay should they be shown lenience as a, as a company we've uh, whenever we whenever we've looked after customers we we've always been very focused on trying to make sure that we did the right thing um having hardship funds um, doing our best to keep um, bills down as much as possible. Are you increasing your hardship fund, though? We've uh, we've certainly announced plans in Ireland this year where we've substantially increased the amount of money that we've uh, that we've made available to customers. Yes, in Ireland, not in the UK. So he's talked about plans of increasing the hardship fund in Ireland, but not in the UK. But we'll get to this guy a little bit more about him in a moment. And just finally, what are your thoughts about the possibility of blackouts this winter? Is that a, something that keeps you awake at night? As an infrastructure company, we all obviously want to make sure that we provide smooth, continuous supplies of, uh, of power and gas uh, and energy to people. Um, going around all the various companies like ours to make sure that we're we're ready and prepared to deliver what they need to. Uh, and I've not heard anybody uh, uh, talk about those things. Uh, and indeed, I think in Grid's latest assessment, they thought this winter would be fine, basically. Well, that's perhaps uh, something positive, that there may not be blackouts. Now, the guy we're talking about here, the, the guy who was interviewed, his name is Alistair Phillips-Davies. He's the current CEO of SSE PLC. And you can see here, according to Wikipedia, he became deputy chief executive of SSE in September 2012 and chief executive in July 2013. In 2014, he was paid £755,000 in salary. In 2016, he was paid 844000 along with 910000 bonus a 644,000 long-term incentive payout and 25,000 and 5,002, sorry, 502,000 in benefits. In 2017, he received 2.92 million pounds just weeks after an argument over bill caps. Now, what's this bill caps? This is from the, uh, the Guardian back in 2017. It says, SSE boss gets 72% pay rise weeks after arguing against caps on bills. Now, this is back in 2017. It says here, the boss of one of the UK's biggest energy companies has been given a 72% pay rise just weeks after arguing against consumers having their bills capped to save them £100 a year. So this guy argued with the government or the regulatory about, uh, authority saying, no, no, people should not have, there should not be caps on energy um, to save people £100 a year. And it succeeded and he was given a 72% bonus for doing so. This was back in 2017. Now he's paid £4.5 million this year. 
When I said about nationalization, under nationalization, you could probably set this guy's salary. You, the, guy, the state could decide, okay, not some independent body he's talking. And I've been trying to find some research. I've been doing a bit of research trying to find out who is this independent body he's talking about. And I can't find anything. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. Just it's a bit difficult to find this independent body he's talking about. But if the government were in charge, if this company was nationalized, they could say, well, here is the salary, £150,000 a year, £200,000 a year. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. People are struggling at the moment. They can't pay their bills. This guy, back in 2017, decided it would be a good idea to fight against a cap that would help protect people. I don't know what his position is today. I hope it has changed. I don't know if it has. Let me know in the comment section, guys, but you think, as always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.